It is a side effect of chemotherapy that most breast cancer patients dread. For many of them, it means the beginning of the stares and the questions. 90s reporter Ryan Harris shows us that no longer has to be the case for patients at the University of Colorado Hospital. I would have never in a million years thought I'd be a lady walking around with a bunch of pills. <laughs> it's like, Some of the worst um, news Phyllis Sanchez would ever receive. I was shocked. That's the last thing I would have ever thought. Came on her birthday. I deal with cancer every day of my life and my job, so I never would have imagined it would happen to me. A mammographer herself, Phyllis unfortunately became more in tune with the struggle of the countless patients she's cared for. I mean, I was a mess. I could not believe what was going to happen to me. She worried about the outcomes. She worried about the treatment. And she could not stop thinking about one glaring side effect. For a woman, your hair is so important. You know, everyone says, oh, it's okay. It won't be that bad, but it is. It really is. Which brings us to her second chemo treatment. It's tight. It's and that tight. wrap on her head, the Digni cap. It's ice, ice cold. It's really, really cold. A new FDA approved method to protect your hair from falling out during chemo. You stun the cells that are in the hair follicle and they stop dividing, so they stop making uh, hair. You don't let the toxic agent get close to it with the blood vessel, so you basically clamp down the blood supply to the skin. Personal image means something to Phyllis. I just didn't want to look sick. That's what's so important to me is to not look sick. But it's not vanity. As a mammographer, I don't want to go to the waiting area and look like a cancer patient. I don't want to look sick. It scares them. It's about having that feeling, that something, in a world turned upside down, is normal. I want hope for other women. I want them to be able to keep their hair. And that's one reason Phyllis did this interview today. Phyllis lives in New Mexico. She and her family make the seven-hour drive for each treatment because they do not have Dignicaps in New Mexico. She's hoping by bringing more attention to the technology that more hospitals will bring in the equipment necessary to make this happen. Guys, she's a real fighter. It was nice to talk to her today. Yeah, how about that, that she actually is the one that performs mammograms yeah. and this is how it's caught. All but her life, and now she's starting to pay more attention to the process with each of her patients, too. She's kind of able to, you know, uh, relate to them a little bit more. And it's one less worry that she has to think about now and more energy she can spend putting towards her cancer fight. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, totally, absolutely. And But she really wants to keep her hair. She's so right. adamant about that. It means so much to her. Of well, and I think a lot of cancer patients will say it's not only just part of who you are but it also there is this awkward thing people don't know what to say once you've been diagnosed yeah. and somehow it's symbolic like I'm sick even mm -hmm. though you're not necessarily sick yeah. you might feel great so how this has evolved though I mean we've I know we've reported about this a few sure. years ago but it was really in the testing stages. so before they used to use something called cold caps it's, yes. it's as simple as that and cold caps are basically very similar it's a device that goes over your head but it's just that and it has to remain on dry ice it's not hooked up to a big machine that can monitor exactly what the temperature is at that time. So you had husbands of wives who were getting breast cancer treatment in chemotherapy bringing in dry ice every day just to make sure that those caps stayed cold uh. and it's not exactly a precise process so these things cool down you can't monitor the temperature the follicle opens back up and that chemotherapy that medicine gets back in there and you would have patches of hair that would mm. be lost after so it just wasn't as reliable this is much more reliable and a little bit cheaper too. Is it an option for everyone? No, uh, and not okay. right now at UCH. I mean, they're hoping to apply to, to more cancer patients, but right now they're, it's only open to breast cancer patients, and they only have a couple of machines. It's really a resource issue right now. It also might not be great for every type of chemotherapy. It kind of depends on what kind of treatment you're going through. So talk to your doctor. Yeah, this is the, at least to ask, right? At yeah, the very absolutely. Least. People are so excited about this happening right now. It's in 26 states. They're hoping it'll be in a lot more soon. Very yeah. promising. That's awesome. You, and we do hear of these cases where people don't get something checked out because they just, in the back of their head, are thinking chemotherapy and yeah. think of that. And isn't it a great reminder right now? I mean, we need yeah. to get checked. Women need to get checked. And she's lucky she caught it early. It was very small. And she's really hoping to fight it aggressively with chemotherapy. She has two more rounds on the way. Okay. Oh. All right. Wish her the best of luck. Yep, Stay absolutely. strong. Good luck, yeah. Phyllis. That's it. Yeah. That, that's it. Good health to you, Phyllis. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan.